Dili Airport, East Timor. Ministers and dignitaries assemble for the homecoming of Prime Minister Janana Guzmao. Guzmao has been on a world tour in search of military alliances and hardware. He's visited multiple countries except, very pointedly, Australia. With his government becoming increasingly close to China, he certainly caught America's interest and was reportedly in discussions with the US about the provision of naval facilities on the south coast. It's now rumoured that he wants an air force as well and that he's been to see the Brazilians about providing one. Do Brazil be able to participate or collaborate in the component area of the Defence of Timor-Leste? We have to collaborate. Nós temos que mudar a, a configuração das nossas prioridades nacionais porque o processo avança. Uh, mas não dá His answer para... is cryptic, but what is clear is that he's becoming increasingly impatient with Australia's practice of providing military supervision but little cooperation on military facilities. For uh, English training. It seems Guzmão wants more bang in the buck from military aid. Why do you have to go so far when Australia is next door? Have you asked the Australians for military uh, infrastructure? Uh, I don't know if uh, Australia... Uh, what we know is that uh, they don't do. And if Australia won't provide military infrastructure, it seems other powers are ready to step into the breach. China in building with China at the front of the queue. Any drive through East Timor reveals the growing largesse and influence of China. Chinese business is building the power system for East Timor, a huge contract which they won at tender, and good luck to them. The Chinese government has donated and built the presidential palace and the massive new offices for the Department of Foreign Affairs, which is very generous of them. But other developments might make Australian defence strategists a little uneasy. The Chinese are building, gratis, a military barracks on the outskirts of town for the East Timorese Army. They're training Timorese officers in China, selling Chinese naval vessels and weaponry and donating this new military headquarters in downtown Dili. An impressive site for President Ramos Horta, who has a fairly impressive building of his own. I'm going to uh, exchange the building, my building and for this one. You prefer this one, do you? I think this one is more imposing, so more fitting for the president. <laughs> the headquarters are nearing completion, and Horta tours the facility with Chinese ambassador Fu Yu Chung. Undoubtedly, Australia would welcome all aid to Timor but the donation of military assets and the supply of naval vessels and training may be another matter altogether. You would have been aware there'd be some sensitivities about, uh, about that. It's quite of a different nature. Um, what was Australia's uh, reaction as far as you could uh, tell to, uh, to that? Well, first let me say the two major patrol boats cost about $30 million. We paid for it cash. Plus, the, and the contract included training of our officers in, uh, in China. Well, when you have the Australian Academy, Military Academy in Canberra, uh, offering uh, two places a year for, on the Academy, uh, when the Chinese take 30 in one go to train in our, uh, to, for, to, uh, to uh, manage our two patrol boats, uh, so, well, we have to look after our, our interests. Chinese ambassador Fu Yuchong. Uh, 
军事呃交往方面有一些呃有一些交往，嗯，主要是呃人员培训，现在有有有几名的这个。At the government offices that same day, another deal is being signed with the Chinese. Thank you for your continuous support to this 100 building project. Defence Secretary Giulio Pinto signs off on a free security wall and earthworks around a military compound down the coast. What do you think China's interest is? I think I don't, I don't understand about the Chinese interest for Timor-Leste, mm. but uh, what we want to explain is uh, we try to professionalize our military mm. with uh, other country. Pinto is off to inspect another complementary Chinese project, a military barracks down near the naval port at Hera. And he describes the fairly simple process his defense department goes through when requiring assistance. And how does that happen? If you want a new military headquarters, how do you do that sort of deal? What, what, what goes on in those That's negotiations? No negotiation. We send a letter and they just send a technical team to come discuss with us to provide us a design. Yeah. And then um, we need around uh, um, three or four months and they respond our letter. And so, but when you're when you're in China, uh, are you discussing negotiations? Is there is there anything? No, else? I I meet with uh, Minister of Defence of China, and we discuss about uh, uh, defence in terms of uh, uh, assisting Timor Leste, and then okay. they said uh, uh, if you need something, you provide, you ask to to China to help. We are ready to help us, to help you. So. Clearly, the Chinese are courting the East Timorese military, but it seems the mood is relaxed in Canberra and at the Australian Embassy in Dili. Of course, I think it's only natural that uh, Timor Leste develops um, a good and substantive relationship uh, with China. Do you welcome? Uh... Miles Armitage is the new ambassador to East Timor and has largely inherited a landscape and seascape increasingly dominated by the Chinese. Nation building aside, on pure military issues, clearly the Timorese are looking elsewhere than Australia. Now, has Australia done well enough in ensuring that we're making the good enough offers or exerting our, our uh, financial muscle? Or are we comfortable with East Timor seeking other partners? We are comfortable with uh, East Timor seeking other partners. Should we be? Yes, we should be. At the small naval base at Hera, east of Dili, Australian trained special forces go through their paces. But since independence, it's been clear that the Timorese wanted more than rubber duckies for their navy to get around in. Both Australia and New Zealand, as well as the United States and UK, ganging up together, didn't agree with the more or less developing maritime security. Well, who, who did they think would look after your security? Exactly. Whatever Australia's wishes may have been, Timor now has its patrol boats. Captain Donatello Gomez is the commander of the fleet. This is proud for, for me for the country and for all of the Timorese that um, see the Timor-Leste rise as an independent country, as a sovereign country with their flag under Timor-Leste jurisdiction. The Shanghai-class vessels were delivered last July. 36 Timorese personnel have been undertaking naval training in China and a Chinese team sent to supervise on board in East Timor. No more foreign uh, trainers on board. Now we operate the two patrol boats by ourselves. Five Chinese advisers are still based at the dock, but are soon to leave. I don't think it's up to uh, Australia to express a view on uh, the commercial decision made by a sovereign country. 
a commercial decision with pointy ends on it, as second officer Raul Correa explains. The armament on board, it's actually we have a 14.5 millimeter twin gun and a 30 millimeter cannon. And uh, we do have AK-47-10 on board. That's pretty serious, huh? Yes, it's actually Chinese weapon as uh, this boat. This boat actually we, we get it from China, so the weapon is a Chinese weaponry. If you need uh, spare parts for this boat or for the, uh, for the weapons, uh, where do you have to get them? China? Uh, well, uh, as far as, uh, as, far as uh, I know, we still get it from China as the boat is uh, designed in China. It seems ridiculous that there is such a disconnect between allied neighbours sharing a sea border, particularly as Australia claims it did finally offer assistance under the Pacific Patrol Boat Program. I personally uh, prefer much closer maritime cooperation with Australia and Indonesia. Because we're, we're neighbours, right? We're, yes. share, we're sharing the same sea. Yes, yes. But it seems to me that some big mistake's been made. I mean, clearly it's in Australia's interest to have an integrated maritime defence. I assume it's in East Timor's interest. What, what went wrong? Uh, well, uh, I think it's taken uh, too long in Australia uh, to uh, appreciate the needs of Timor-Leste for having a credible maritime security. Has East Timor, specifically, has East Timor asked Australia for uh, hardware assistance for, for, for boats to integrate with the Australian Navy? No, what Australia did offer and we didn't accept it uh, was the Pacific uh, program because we didn't think it was suitable for our uh, waters. And that was what Australia had available. They're offering them for free, pretty much. Yes, but uh, not suitable. It seems that more than the boats being unsuitable, it was the nature of the Australian offer that caused East Timor to look elsewhere. The boats were to have Australian captains and senior crew. Communications were to be directed through Australia and the vessels were to be unarmed. Isn't it in our interests, isn't this one place where we can serve East Timorese interests and Australian interests to ensure that in fact it is Australian and East Timorese in that, uh, in that region? Or is that too... Uh... Well, I'm, I'm trying to suggest to you, Mark, that we actually have a greater level of involvement uh, and cooperation, uh, including with the naval component than uh, you're acknowledging. And part of that is working with other foreign partners, China, Portugal, the US and Japan. Australia has recently sent two permanent maritime advisers to presumably complement the Chinese ones, and other offers are being discussed. Did you get Australia's attention by buying those uh, Chinese boats though? Did they sit up and uh, pay a bit more attention uh, after this? Well, it looks like, uh, at least by coincidence, only when we purchased the Australian uh, the Chinese boats uh, that we have seen uh, more offers of uh, support for our maritime uh, capabilities from Australia, from the US, and now we have a military uh, better military cooperation with all of these countries. It may be a further coincidence that US and Australian forces, or the ISF as they're known here, are planning naval exercises in the seas around East Timor next month. It seems this little navy may be creating a lot of interest from some big nations, hopefully with Australia amongst them. Well, according to the plan, we're going to have uh, joint training between the U.S. Marine, Timor-Leste Marine, and uh, ISF. Uh, naval, naval training. Yes, naval so training. They're bringing, uh, they're bringing ships over, obviously, for this one. Well, according to pro the program, uh, the the U.S. Marine it is, but the ISF they are uh, infantry, so we are going to conduct the okay. close quarter battle training. Okay. No, no Chinese Navy. No Chinese Navy. Ah, oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we we're all friends. Ha, 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 ha.